start with the, the, the film that was like at the top of your list, but isn't your number one, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, which, which is Twister. Oh, yeah. This is... might be my number one. I don't know. I was thinking about oh, it. Oh, really? Well, okay. It's an early show. But it... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... I, I mean, I'm going to say that for every movie, I feel like. Every time we come <laughs> up with a new one, I'm going to be like, oh, that might be number one. I don't know. <laughs> That's a sign of a good But yeah, movie. Twister. I don't know. Do you guys uh, overseas, do you, you... I mean, how does this movie resonate overseas? Because they don't... Do you have tornadoes over there? No, no, we don't have anything no, close, nothing, to, close to tornadoes like here, no. But, but it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a massive blockbuster, so we, yeah, like, everyone sure. right. knows about Twister, you know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, it was an international uh, blockbuster, like you said. It was crazy. And I was watching it recently, and it still, like, holds up. I can't believe it came out in, like, 1996. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, to compare it to something, I watched, I rewatched the, like, original Mortal Kombat from that time. Oh yeah, oh, and yeah. it's like a. I mean, we could make a better movie on our phones. I think. <laughs> yeah, than that, but the special effects in Twister aren't, aren't as bad as the, like other '96 films. Definitely, they're not that for bad. sure. It looks normal. I mean, it, I mean, you could see it's like a computer, but it's not like Wizard of. It's. I mean, it's not even like Wizard of Oz or anything crazy like that. It's like it's a great looking movie still, and Bill Paxton is one of my favorite actors. Yeah. I know there's a. You're gonna see a a lot of Tom Cruise on this list. <laughs> Phil Paxton, I think like sneaks in a few times like Twister. And then there's a couple other times, but yeah, Bill Paxton's like, I, I was rewatching big love during quarantine. I don't know if you watched that show at all. It's about Mormons okay. and uh, like polygamy or whatever. It's on HBO. And he's amazing in that too. It's I, I'm so sad that he died. And I feel like people are like, they forget that he even died. They're like, Oh yeah, Bill Paxton's dead. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know you mean it kind of went under the radar a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, he's just uh, one of those guys that's in like everything from the 90s and even a little bit before that. And then uh, he was taken too soon from us, I feel like. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, so talking of, uh, so obviously you got uh, him, you got said Tom Cruise pops up in a lot. You've got Tom Cruise in three of your top 10 films. Yes. You've also got um, Carrie Elvez, another, another actor who is in a lot of films. But never that's like true. He's, like, he's in two of your films, at least. That's right. That's right. I forgot he was in two of them. What I'm trying to, th I know which one in particular, but is uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil the list if we want to, but I can't think of the second one that he's in that's in my list. There, he's in. I know uh, he's he's in Days of Thunder as well. He's in Twister and Days of Thunder. No, I knew that one. Oh, that's right. He's in Twister. He's in Twister. I, don't Twister. Know he's in Twister. I thought <laughs> what he meant. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was thinking of Days of Thunder. He's yeah. a bad guy in both. Yeah, that's yeah, wild. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. I forgot all about that. Yeah, he's in, but he's another one who just kept. It's weird how in the '90s we really recycled the same people. Yeah, but they played in such different roles that you didn't even notice. Like right now, I don't even know like The Rock. I feel like he's the same person in every movie. Yeah, I know you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so much. Acting. So it's yeah, it's weird. But like in Twister, you know. He's the bad guy in that. He's the bad guy in Days of Thunder. I mean, who's really a bad guy in Days of Thunder? But <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's like the he's like the rival or whatever at the end. And uh, yeah, Twister though. Me and my cousin used to watch that every night, like for years when we were little kids, like oh, really? sleepovers. We'd watch Twister every time. I knew every I know every word of that. Movie. It's crazy. <laughs> do, do you have any Philip Seymour Hoffman and stuff? Did you grow up like in that sort of area? Well, no, I, I never had, I mean, they, they kind of can crop up in the U.S. like in some places where they're not supposed to once in a while. And we would have like tornado warnings. And I used to get like scared. Like I was terrified of a tornado. And then I saw Twister. And then I, I became obsessed with wanting to like go find a tornado. <laughs> like it, it, it like flip flopped. Yeah. So I've never like been around one. One time I was in Cleveland and... Um, there had been a system that came through and I remember going like, this is like a tornado and it was one that was forming. And then it like later I found out it formed like down a couple of uh, counties away or whatever, but it definitely was like the system that passed through. So that was as close as I came, but I've never like been around one, but it is my fantasy to like smoke a cigarette and stare at one. <laughs> <laughs> close, close enough, but still a safe enough yeah. distance you don't have to worry about. Yeah, yeah, like where I could have a cigarette and be like, wow, and then just like <laughs> know that a town is getting like fucked up over there. Or 
Yeah, I'd like to do that to do that with a bunker right next to me. Yeah. So if I do need it, <laughs> yeah, in there. case it turns. Yeah, just in case, because <laughs> you never know. If there's one thing I learned from Twister is that they, they can just turn at any moment. Or yes, that is true. <laughs> you just tie yourself with a belt to a pipe. You know, That's always a winner. Yeah. That works. Oh my god, that one. I mean, that theory is so bananas that they put that in there where they just like towed themselves to that thing. Yeah. Like as if like the passing of the thing didn't like throw. <laughs> I mean, like, I was just waiting for, like, a, a two-by-four or something to go through Helen Hunt's head at that point. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. The amount of debris. You can't. You'd get ripped apart in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Literally yeah. five seconds before, there's a cow going through the air, but they're always fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just tie yourself to a pole. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've just been, like, your a, leg off thinking at these movies, though, there's going to be a lot of holes, like, films like Twister. Well, sure, of course, <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, Twister had a lot of those. And then I loved how Bill Paxton would just be like, it's coming this way, and then like he yeah. knew when it would like he just knew from looking at it that it was gonna turn. Yeah, I love that. Like I mean, sense. yeah, yeah, he's yeah. playing with the dirt and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the best. The wind whisperer. <laughs> yeah, Ed, Twister was made, like you said, uh, is ninety six. Right. At your list. You haven't got a film in your top ten that's past ninety six. So is that, did you're you right. start watching films after that? Or was it just... I pretty much did. I mean, like, there's probably some in the 2000s and stuff, but it really, like, it's be, it's before my point of jadedness, I will say that. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know what happened to movies, I, especially in the last, like, 10 years, or it's just what's happened to me, I imagine, <laughs> more than what's happened to movies. But I just don't... Um, I mean, I'm sure there are some, but, like, I'm just not as, like... Um, pure as i was back then like these are movies i had on like i collected them like they were on vhs tape and they then i had them on dvd or whatever i mean through every sort of form i kept buying them and re-watching them over and over again by the way i don't do that with movies very much anymore i don't feel like right are you are you a fan of like the recent like franchises like the marvel films the star wars films stuff like that i am i i do like star wars um star wars could have very well cracked this list at some point but it's it's almost more like it's just oxygen at this point like um the recent ones you know i like them quite a bit but i didn't uh it didn't it still didn't make me go like like i've i've rewatched them but it didn't make me go like these are my favorite you know what i mean i don't know if anything's capable of being my favorite now that i'm an older person I'm yeah, yeah, approaching yeah. middle age. I don't know that I could like, I don't know that anything's going to crack through and become more my favorite than things that I grew up watching. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it yeah, takes yeah. a lot to crack my top 10 now. Yeah, right, definitely. Right. Like um, the best movie I watched recently was probably Mortal Kombat. I mean, it was so much fun. And I thought like, if I was a little kid, this would become my favorite movie. Maybe, you know, is that the yeah. new one that's just come out? Yeah. The one that just happened. Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. It was, it was very good. Pleasantly surprised yeah, yeah, by yeah, that. Well, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it was really fun. I love how much it stuck to the game as well. There's so many little nods to the game in yeah. it. Yes, there's moves from the game. There's little quotes and stuff like that. Little like references. It was very good. Yeah, yeah, much better than I expected. Yeah. I was, I, like it's one of those where you're never sure going in, are you? What you're going to get? Like a Mortal Kombat a, film. A film of a game, is right? Amazing, yeah, yeah. isn't it? That's pleasant, pleasant surprise, definitely. Right. You're yeah, right. I forget. So, I, I, I mean, I, do you want to go through another one, or how do you do it? Do you go? Yeah, yeah, we'll go, yeah, yeah. Your, your next one. On oh, your my list. bad. Is uh, Top Gun. Top first, Gun, yeah. The three Tom Cruise films. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I could make a, an argument for all of them, pretty much. But Top Gun, I, and you know what? I don't know if Top Gun might be like third out of my three top Tom Cruise films, if oh, I yeah. were to rank them. Um, I do appreciate, I mean, it's, again, another one that still holds up. Like, they did a really great job on it with making it. I'm nervous about the sequel, but it's one of those movies where, like, you come across as a kid and then you're like, what is this? Holy hell. And like, yeah. it was, like, I wanted to be a fire pilot till I was like, till I realized like, Josh, you're blind. You can't be a fire pilot. <laughs> you, like I, I was blind way before I wanted to be a fighter pilot, but here I am going like, oh, I think I could do it. And it's like, no, you legitimately will never be able to do that. Well, you're supposed to tell kids you can be anything you want to yeah. be, I guess. So you're going with that yeah. angle. <laughs> well, they did, they did go with that for a while and no one had the balls to tell me like, <laughs> <laughs> they just—they're like he'll figure it out. Yeah, eventually. Like, you won't even get invited to the to like flight <laughs> school, let alone become Top Gun. <laughs> Your list is uh, it's, it's very uh, well 
a very American list. And I think Top it Gun is, isn't it? Top Gun is the epitome <laughs> of an American film, I think. It's just the old man, patriotic. It's just action. It's Tom Cruise, who's he's probably the old man American. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, it's of, of like war propaganda, it is the most innocent of it, yeah. I would imagine. Um, because it's very, like, I mean, the Air Force here does credit Top Gun because it came out the year I was born, 86. Okay. And they credit, like, the late eighties and early nineties, they had massive recruitment in the air force yeah. because okay. of top gun. Yeah. And I grew up thinking, I'm like, that's a cool little side effect, but no, like, no, that's why the government helped them make it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. cause they knew it was going to happen. So like they gave them access to all those planes and like they filmed them doing wild shit. And that's like uh, the art to it, but also like, they wouldn't have had that ability to do it. If the government was like, we're not making an <laughs> air force movie. Sorry. No, but but like, yeah, it is very. Uh, video, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. But uh, yeah, like if it was, because um, it was, um, what was his name? Uh, not Ridley Scott, his brother. Tony made this Scott. Film. Oh, okay. Tony, yeah, yeah. So like, if it was Ridley Scott, they would have been like, uh, you did a little bit of anti-war stuff, yeah. so <laughs> we're not going to let you. <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't work quite so well. Despite Just, yeah. Top Gun being so American, though, I, I was in the Navy for a while and. The, the two proper American naval films that we still watch is Top Gun and Men of Honor. That's the ones we constantly watch. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, but, that's right. Top Gun is like naval aviators. It's yeah, not it's even Air Force. Pilots. Yeah, it's naval that's pilots. hilarious. Yeah. But that's still the one that every deployment, someone's watching it. And you walk in the mess, it's like, oh, God, Top Gun again. But then you sit down and watch it, and you're like, yes. <laughs> it's one of those ones, like, every time it's on, I can sit there and watch, no matter where it is in the film, I can just pick it up and watch yeah. it to the end. And I don't know, like, I don't have that with new movies. Like you were saying, it doesn't happen anymore. But, uh, like, I guess Dark Knight would be, like, the only one past 2000 that I could, like, sit and watch again. I don't know. I'm trying to think of other ones, but I can't even think of movies Hell, the Oscars just happened. I couldn't name one of those movies that were even nominated for anything. I was like, what are the... There were, I didn't even know there were movies last year, let alone ones that would be nominated for Oscars. But Yeah, it was a strange year for films, wasn't it? it was like, like, they're like the indie films won, but they're not indie films because they're big budget Oscar movies. So like, yeah. They are still sort of indie <laughs> they're movies. They're not indie this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, think- Top Gun was huge. Uh, and then Val Kilmer. I mean, every actor in that was like... Yeah. Legit, it was the best. Yeah, I love how it's got it's got a bit of everything as well. Because I was going to say, like, you, you haven't got many comedies on your list for, for for a comedian. It's very like low on the comedies. But Top Gun, there are so many moments where you do laugh at it. And, like, yeah. Particularly between Goose and Maverick, like their chemistry on it is is right. A lot of these are like action movies that have comedy in them. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that's something that's missing from a lot of action movies that have come out recently. Like they're just not as funny. And that was one thing that was nice about Mortal Kombat. Very funny. But like, uh, yeah, like all those old school, even Twister had Philip Seymour Hoffman in like a comedic role, which yeah. was something that was very weird. And that's what I always liked was movies that were not supposed to be funny, but were. Yeah. So they, like all of these have like an element of humor to them in some capacity. I'm not a big like um, bash you over the head with comedy kind of guy. I mean, there are some in there, I feel like, but yeah, there's. I feel like comedies too have not been made recently. I mean, like I can't think of other than like super bad. I can't tell you what, uh, what's the last like cultural comedy that's like everyone's quoting and everything like that. I can't think of one past super bad or like, I guess bridesmaid made bridesmaids, I guess. But like even that's kind of, I think the last one I would quote him was Anchorman, but is that before Superbad that or before. after? That's, that's 2004. That was yeah, before yeah. Superbad. That's pretty good show. Yeah, yeah. Superbad. Yeah. But yeah, they're just not making comedies very much anymore. I feel like, not not in the same way. No, definitely not. Your uh, your next one is uh, another American patriotic one, Independence Day, with a bit of comedy as well. Oh yeah. yeah well, yeah. that one's more. I feel like that's globally uh, patriotic, if you will. Like it's more Earth patriotism than it is American <laughs> because of the fact that we have to come together and fight uh, the foe from another planet. You know what I mean? So yes, it is Independence Day though. July 4th becomes a uh, international holiday thanks to the fine yeah. aliens that come down. But uh, yeah, no, that one is my dad took me to see that back in 1996, like when it came out or 97, I can't remember which one, but it was one of those movie going experiences where it blew my mind. And like, it was 
all encompassing too. Like that's, I don't feel like movies have that very much anymore. Maybe Jurassic world had that, I guess, or I'm just not paying attention because I'm old, but like <laughs> it was every story you went into had independence day shirts and like toys yeah. and there were posters everywhere. It was yeah. like one of these just movements, you know, these events. Definitely. I think it took Will Smith to like another level as yeah. well, didn't it? He was already obviously like Fresh Prince and stuff, but that really like knocked him up to like a global sort of yeah. superstar. I think. Proper action hero in that Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Jeff Goldblum was in yeah. it too. And yeah. he was like a huge, he was like the nerdy action star all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But the, uh, the president's speech as well near the end is, I don't care if you're American or what country you're from, you feel patriotic after that speech, no matter what. <laughs> oh, me. yeah. Yeah, because he's speaking to the whole world. He's like, yeah. today, July 4th, it's <laughs> no longer an American holiday. Are you, are you a fan of the sequel as well? <laughs> yeah, did Am you watch a fan the of what? The sequel? Oh, the sequel was horse shit. <laughs> 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 I was like, what the hell? Like, that's the thing. It's just like ruins it. I feel like that's going to happen to Top Gun too. Like, they're going to do a sequel and I'm going to be like, what the fuck? I am worried. Uh, yeah, well, but I think they could hold a little true. I don't know. I like to stay optimistic and I'll watch it, of course. But yeah. and same with Independence Day. I was like, I'll watch it. And there were parts of it that you're like, that's cool. But like when you find out Will Smith isn't going to be involved, you're like, yeah. and that's then they cool. kill him off. You're like, that's fucked. He just <laughs> dies. Yeah, yeah. Tom Cruise is going to be don't even see it. Cool, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that gives you a little bit of hope at least. Then. For sure. And there's, I think there's the other, some of the other cast members yeah. are coming back too. I hope not Kelly McGillis. She looks like hell. Uh, they just keep her away. I doubt it very much. <laughs> <laughs> the poor lady, just keep her off the screen. That's all. Uh, your next one, it has been on a lot of our list. Now, how many has it been on now? Uh, well, it's about sixty percent of our list so far. Yeah. So, back really, to, Back to the uh, Future. Yeah. yeah. Is it? I didn't realize oh, okay. how it was. But yeah, it's been on a lot of lists. Yeah, that was one. I mean, like it came up before my time, but like growing up, I would go to my. I, I had a lot of like movie um, exposure going to my aunt's house and she always had like all the new movies as they came out. They were just, she was like a blockbuster. It was crazy. <laughs> and, uh, I watched all the back of the futures. Plus it was on television all the time. Yeah. And, uh, it was just one of those movies again, where I could just watch it no matter where it was. And it was so much fun and there was so much to it where it was like constantly as a kid, you're like, man, it's like when you'd watch movies as a kid, I feel like you would find, or you would think something else is going to happen or something. You wouldn't even realize that like you were watching the same film. It seems like you would find little pieces inside of it, new things every time. And I don't know where that went in my body. I don't know if I became <laughs> jaded or something, but I don't have that ability anymore. I'm just like, Oh yeah, I know this scene or whatever. I think it's because when you're a kid, cause you're not used to films, you don't know the, like the old film tropes. You don't know it's going to work out in the end. You don't know yeah, he's going to yeah, get the girl in the end. Yeah. Cause you're a kid, you don't realize that. So every film just seems a bit fresher doesn't it. Whereas as you get older, you know, it's going to work out all right in the end sort of thing. That's true. And I think also too, like YouTube, like now you can YouTube your favorite movie scenes or something like that. Or I feel yeah. like we just are constantly barraged with like footage. And, uh, I just don't, now when I see a movie again, I'm like, I know what happens here. I'm looking at my phone or something. I don't know. It's just so weird. Back then, you just stare at the television yeah. and watch it. And Back to the Future was on. We have a channel. I don't, I'm don't. i sure they have it in the UK. I don't know. Turner Broadcasting, like uh, TNT, oh, yeah. uh, TBS. Yeah. It's out of, based out of Atlanta. It's uh, Ted Turner's Superstation or whatever. But they play Back to the Future, the marathon, all three films, every couple of weekends, you know? Like, you'd see right. it pop up. And I'd sit and watch the whole thing straight through commercials <laughs> and everything Yeah, ha edited for time and everything like that. <laughs> I think it used to be a big deal, didn't it? Like even not even necessarily going to cinema, but watching a film at home, you, the family would sit around and watch it. Whereas now because of Netflix and things like yeah. that, you can sit there and watch four films in a day without even really thinking about it. Like what we do all the time because we're painting, we'll have a film on in the background and I can literally sit there and watch all three Back to the Future films without really paying much attention to it. Yeah. Right. But yeah, that's true. Before. Yeah, and, and there was no, like, rewind or anything, like, if you miss something, too. So, yeah. like, you're watching it on basic cable, and you're just staring at it, and then it's just rolling through. And, like, you could leave. I remember you'd, like, they'd play them three in a row throughout the day. So, like, you'd leave, and then you come back at, like, 4, four o'clock, you pick it up somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was wild. But Back of the Future was huge. I'd watch that over and over again. I like the sequels. The sequels are fine. I didn't... Um, hate the sequels a lot of people hated back to the future 3 i guess but i didn't grow up in the time when that was like 
I guess when did Back to the Future Three come out? In the early nineties. I mean, I was alive for that, but I had no. It wasn't affecting me like they have all these documentaries now about how they made Back to the Future Three. I think on the third VHS tape, you could sit there and they'll have like they'll show you because it was like a big moment in uh, that time because they filmed them pretty much back to back two right. and three with the like knowledge that they were going to do that. So people thought that they did a bit of shitty job with the third one, but I thought it was fun with the Cowboys and everything. It's like, what do you want them to do? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least it was different to the other two. They tried to do something yeah. really different, you know, sending it. Right. Yeah. What, what are they going to do at this point? You know, they got to wrap it up somehow and yeah. they got a little crazy with it at the end there, but that was, it was fun. I mean, like, you're like, how many times could they flush the same like little like <laughs> sequence of time through time? You know, yeah. I wanted them to keep going. I'm like, let's see one in Civil War. Let's see one in like keep it going. <laughs> keep pushing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your uh, your next one is is very different to the other ten on the list. Wizard of Oz. Oh yeah, because it's super old. I mean, I all these by the way like made me want to grow up and become a director, and I actually went. I was applying to film schools and stuff when I was uh, going to college. And then I got a job on the radio and I was like, fuck that. And then I also realized as I became an, a, became older, like what entails being a director? And it's like, oh, you got to like run everything. Fuck that. I, don't do any of that. <laughs> I thought it was like more artistic than it was like this middleman trying to like tell you do this, you do that. I actually, you know, like, oh shit. Hold on. Sorry. That's right. No worries. I got a phone call in the middle of that. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I just realized, like, oh, you have to be, like, a leader, and you have to be, like, a boss and everything. And I was like, screw that, and I went into radio. It was pretty, like, I almost went into film school. Like, I think about that all the time. I'm like, what if you just went to film school not realizing <laughs> how much you work? had to be, like, yeah, how much work <laughs> you had to do as a director? <laughs> That's like going to, like, CEO school or something, and I'm like, yeah, I could do that. No, I would have failed at yeah. that immensely or trying to be a fighter pilot as well <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i had a lot of missteps but so wizard of oz was like one of those movies that when i went to college and i took film classes they would cite you know and it was one of the ones where like i first saw a documentary as a kid and it made me want to be a director like there was one that came on our vhs tape i don't know that's the cool thing about having these vhs tapes and like dvds and stuff was they'd have little documentaries on them. And this yeah. one was by Angela Lansbury narrated it. And it went into how all the production faux pas that they made, all of the errors that they, like the thing where like the, the tin, the original tin man got like lead poisoning. Yeah. Things, like, lead right, paint on him. <laughs> yeah. And like uh, the guy hanging himself in the fucking background, the door, the, the dwarf guy hanging himself. And then, uh, you know, how they made the tornado and yeah. how, like, the uh, Wicked Witch, uh, the woman who played her, uh, who played, like, Gulch or whatever, the woman, you know, the the woman who was supposed to be the depiction yeah. of the Wicked Witch, she, like, burned her face on the thing and everything, like, when, they, when she got stuck underground and everything. I'm like, that's all so cool. And it would just add it to the folklore. It made you want to be a part of the, like, magic of making movies, or at least it did for me. And so... <laughs> That movie was huge, you know, for like in terms of filmmaking, I would watch it right. and I would like be like, oh, you know how they did that? And I'd say, you know, like in the 40s, it was so much fun because they would have to literally do those things. Yeah. There was no computers or like, we'll just edit this like that or whatever. It was like movie, ma literal movie magic. Yeah, definitely. For, for such a, like an, an optimistic, like childish film and stuff like that, there's so many little dark stories that you hear about. Like, That's like, why it's so great, yeah. There's so much <laughs> mad stuff that happened behind the scenes. Because it's like in the 1940s and that, they're just like, yeah, making her smoke, even though she's 16, like, yeah, smoke, be fine. <laughs> it's mental. Oh, yeah, they had, I mean, like, they treated Judy Garland like a child laborer. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, like, I feel like, uh, human trafficked children get treated better than she did back in those times. Did you see the movie Judy? Like, I mean, she was like a slave. They're like, are you eating a sandwich? And they would like slap it out of her hand. You know, she's like four years old. Yeah. It is mad. That's definitely a different time. Uh, you, you next oh, movie, for sure. Your next movie is also a very different again. And your only comedy, Cable Guy. Oh yeah. The best Jim Carrey movie ever, yeah. by the way. And I was obsessed with Jim Carrey. Like he was the guy who made me want to be, doing comedy in any kind of way like ace ventura came out and i was yeah i forget how old was nine or something like that but 
it was the first time me and my dad laughed at something together, like oh, okay. at yeah. the same time. And I'll never forget that. But then, you know, I became obsessed with Jim Carrey after Ace Ventura and the mask. And then I saw cable guy and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and it was like the best movie I ever saw. I used to make my friends watch it. They would be like, this is so weird or whatever, but it's like the darkest comedy. Ben Stiller directs it. And, uh, you know, Jack Black's in it and a bunch of other people. And it's like so subtle other than, you know, aspects of it, but it's such a dark, dark comedy. And, um, the Ben Stiller, I I feel like it's like Ben Stiller's one of his greatest underappreciated work. Uh, even like in terms of acting, like when his part in it, when he plays like, um, what's their version of like the Menendez yeah. trial or whatever? Brothers, yeah, it's like the, the subplot. The, the Smith brothers or whatever, yeah. the subplot. Yeah, he's yeah. just like, it's brilliant. Like the little things that he does in there. The like, uh, he's Asian. I think he was speaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just, <laughs> he Asian. There's just, yeah, there's like little things in there. It's just so funny. And they would make me laugh so hard. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, you were like, am I allowed to be, you know, I didn't know when I was a kid, like, at first, you're like, is this supposed to be a funny movie? But there's so many, like, yeah. fucking laugh-out-loud funny parts. Me and my friends would quote to this day. But, yeah, that was, like, a huge... And then I don't think... I mean, like, it never got... It, it was Jim Carrey's first, like, bust. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I think it was such a great, great movie. Yeah, it's probably, like, cult classic now, I think. Isn't yeah, it? Like, definitely. It's much more appreciated now than it was when it was released. Is it? Yeah, I think people who appreciate it now, yeah. I just... I wish it was on, like, streaming services or something. I want, I want it to be, like... I want it to pick up momentum here. I want there to be like cable guy comic cons or something. <laughs> that would be amazing. The cosplay for that would be unreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, I, they read about um, the, one of the, about the subplot with the brothers and there was a fan theory about um, how they think Jim Carrey was set up the murder for that and framed him for it. <laughs> when, when they played the phone call, it's not actually Ben Stiller's voice. It's Jim Carrey doing an impression of Ben Stiller and that's who did the recording. So they reckon that oh. that's the theory behind it. That's oh, fun. That's amazing. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> I would love a sequel to Cable Guy. Do you know that there was another, um, I think there was a rumor too that Chris Farley was supposed to be the Cable Guy. Yeah, yeah he's supposed uh, to be the really? first in it. When he... uh. Yeah, which would have been weird. And then there was another thing Chris Farley was supposed to be in, but yeah, like that would have been strange, but Jim Carrey was awesome in that. And, uh, and it made me go like Ben Stiller is a great director. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I always kind of forget that he directed it. It was only like, yes, we watched yeah, it. Sure. We, 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 we rewatched it. Sorry. This week. And then when going back, looking at the trivia, I was like, Oh, of course it's Ben Stiller. I completely <laughs> forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Andy Dick's in it. I've seen Andy Dick out here in Hollywood a few times and I'm like, man, he was in cable guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was. Yeah. And he was great in it too. He'd be like, he was doing like the medieval times guy. He's like, and he's like, just get on the friggin' horse. <laughs> like yeah, that. This guy's yeah, that scene where they're fighting. He's going, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So good. There's so many like classic moments in yeah. it, like that fight scene. With the, the, it's like the Star Trek music, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty so good. good yeah. yeah, that movie definitely like affected me in terms of like influence wise, like comedically. Like I guarantee it. Yeah. I mean, just in some a lot of ways, I can't even. Pinpoint. I mean, like the carry. I one time in middle school, like seventh grade or something, there was my family went to a Hilton Head, South Carolina for like a vacation. And there was a band on a dock playing like at a restaurant outside. And they like invited people to come up and sing. And I don't know what I was doing, but like for whatever reason, I went up and I was like, Do you know the song from Cable Guy? <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> They were like, what song from Cable Guy? And I was like, and I started singing it. And they're like, oh, you mean Jefferson Airplane? And I was like, <laughs> I guess, whatever. And I just sang it like he sang it in Cable Guy. And they were oh, like, man. that was, a, they were like, that was hilarious. And I was like, <laughs> you know, what I mean? like the band didn't know that I was doing Cable Guy. <laughs> they just thought I was like doing that. Jeez. And they were like, what the fuck is this kid doing? <laughs> and like, everyone in the crowd was like, what the hell was that? And like, I'm like, it's from Cable Guy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wish I could have seen that. Yeah. Uh, no, no one saw it. They thought I just did that, like as a whim. Like my parents, everybody was like, "What the fuck was that?" They were like, "My aunt and uncle were like, that was amazing. That was like, where did you come up with that?" And I was like, "It's from Cable Guy." <laughs> the amazing. There's some secret video somewhere. Someone was yeah. secretly filming it. You didn't realize. Yeah. YouTube. Uh, your next one, another Tom Cruise film, uh, "A Few Good Men." Again, very, very patriotic, very American. 
yeah no it's it is and it's also but it's also like kind of not because it's like uh it's almost like anti-military the yeah, sentiment yeah, okay. i guess you could say and but it is like very um you know this one for me was like when i was I like started getting into plays because of this. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. I found out it was a play and it was like, this one's very much more outside of like Twister and the other like action movies and um, maybe even Cable Guy. But like this one was more about the acting. Do you know what I mean? Like that's why it resonated with me. I was like, oh man, these are like actors going at it. This is like a really well acted movie and it was really well written, I thought. And it was more about that than it was about like the action of the film, you know. Obviously, Rob Reiner directed it, and he yeah. does a great job at like keeping it moving. So it's not like a play necessarily, but it's like you know just the like courtroom scenes and this this movie made me go like, should I be a lawyer? But I really <laughs> just realized I just like talking in front of people. <laughs> you know I, mean? I don't want there to be any implications on it whatsoever. So. Yeah. More pressure. The, the scene with uh, Jack Nicholson as well. That's like the first thing I think of when I think of Fugue of Men, because that's the most horrible line going. All this. Well, of course, yes. There's that the final scene with, but I feel like even just like Jack Nicholson's minor scenes, yeah. you're just like, God damn. He just has like a little a line. I wonder like how much of it is written in the script and how much of it is him going like, should I just say <laughs> a bad word here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of the bit of the table where Tom Cruise goes to walk away and he, he makes him ask him nicely. Yeah. Oh yeah. That scene is my favorite. It's yeah, a yeah. really big word in there, but I, uh, I love it. It's like that scene is like that undressed, just the way he just calmly undresses him. I'm just like, yeah, you know, you get that, like, I don't know. Maybe again, go, do I want to be a lawyer or do I want to be a, uh, actor? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just want to be able to talk to someone like that. Yeah. Yeah, doing it on Jack Nicholson's level. It's just it's another level altogether, isn't yeah. it? Oh my god, it's so good. And like I feel like that movie is his best movie. I can't I'm like Jack Nicholson, like if you're gonna talk about his movies, like there's like everyone talks about the Joker and yeah. but I'm like this is where he's like for real, legit, like amazing. Like I don't know. I love one flip of the cookies next as well. It's... Yeah, that's a great one too, but it's like that one's so early on. This is like when he's like older and he's like yeah, angry. Great. I don't know. He's like it in, De in Departed. Have you seen Departed? He's like it in that. Oh, yeah, no, he's yeah. great. Yeah, he's okay. great in that too, of course. Yeah. The only snag I've got with a few good men is my, it's my biggest bugbear. Is obviously, I, I was in the military, so when he's at the end and he's in the courtroom and he, he says, officer on deck and salutes him, he's inside, you don't need to salute, and he's not wearing headgear, <laughs> you don't need to salute. What he did, every time, I try and stop it before that bit because it just winds me up so much. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Again, I think if you I'm sure there's a <laughs> there's a lot going on probably with the military uh, aspects of things too like you know they go down to Guantanamo Bay which Guantanamo Bay which is hilarious like now it's such in the zeitgeist because it's like where Obama sent terrorists or who <laughs> he just basically basically people with brown skin that he thought were terrorists he just sent them to Guantanamo Bay yeah. but like back then Guantanamo Bay was just like a fence between Cuba and America yeah. Yeah, it, but they still, still treated it like it was like like the Cubans were going to be like the terrorists. Essentially, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. so weird. You want me on that wall? It's like <laughs> for what? It's Cuba. No one's so you could shoot a kid running over it. Like you know what I mean? Like what are you doing? What are we killing over there? It almost felt like the Cuban Missile Crisis was still going on. <laughs> yeah, no one yeah, yeah. Thirty years later, <laughs> I don't, yeah, know, I don't know, I, when the, yeah, I don't know when the yeah. I don't know when the play was written. So when was the play the play written? I'm sorry too. I. Uh, I was thinking, like, was the play around the Cuban Missile Crisis? Because I, I, that, that's an interesting uh, yeah, thought sure. because it's like um, the movie came out obviously in the '90s, but it was a, a based off that play that came yeah. out probably well before, and it was probably fresh on the heels of the Cuban Missile Crisis at the very least, maybe a decade or so. Yeah. But that's an interesting thought about that because I was thinking, I'm like, what is the consequence here? They're basically border patrol. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Uh, 1986 it was. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Oh, just before. Uh, your next, your next film. I think we did mention another, another Tom Cruise one, Days of Thunder. Oh yeah. I it's mean, absolute classic. I uh, one. This is the movie that got me into NASCAR, by the way. And like, I would say 1999, I had, or was it a little earlier than that? Even I had eye surgery, and I. My mom just got me a bunch of movies, you know, 
And Days of Thunder was one that like was always on television. And I never really watched it, but I was like, I want to. Cause it's like Tom Cruise. I was like, this is like Top Gun, but with NASCAR cars. <laughs> yeah. And so I, it just came, my mom got it for me in a VHS. And I had this like, the way I watched VHS is back then, it would be in this, um, you know, the like hybrids where it'd be like a TV with a VCR inside of it. Yeah. yeah. And every time a movie ended, it would just rewind it and start it over. So when I had eye surgery, I couldn't get up to like change the movie. So Days of Thunder, I swear to God, played like for three days just in my room. And I knew every word to it and I knew everything. Like I could sit there with my eyes closed and tell you what was going on. And uh, it made me go like, I want to watch NASCAR. Yeah. And the very first race I sat down and watched, Dale Earnhardt died. Uh-huh. And I was like, this sport's insane. <laughs> I was like, the biggest... Yeah, I was like, the biggest star of the sport just dies in the Super Bowl of it. Like, in the first race I ever watched, I was like, I was hooked. I, I'm like, I'm watching every single I thought you would have gone race. the other way and thought you were cursed or something, but I'm not going to watch baseball. <laughs> no, <it's- laughs> no, I was hooked. I was like, I can't believe they can die. That's crazy. So, so now every race has become exciting after that. I mean. This was the only one on the list as well that I hadn't seen. Days of Thunder was the only one. And so obviously I watched it and I've got to say I was genuinely pleasantly surprised by it. You know what's funny too? It's like it was, it came out at a time, like if you know anything about NASCAR, it came out at a time like right before they like upgraded everything. Right. You know, it seems because when I started watching NASCAR, already like the car's chassis were better. The engines were better. Like in Days of Thunder, they're using like, the early '90s shit. So they're like, they're like bumping each other on super speedways. They couldn't do that. Now they're flying literal <laughs> jets, essentially, and they can't possibly bump each other like that because they'll literally die. So like, it's just funny to watch it. Like how it was, it came out at a time like in NASCAR where it was right at the cusp of like everything was about to go to a different direction. Yeah. And so it's kind of like this moment in time in the sport where like they still had. The, sh- the slower, shittier cars, and like they could do that kind of shit where they're like bumping and rubbing and everything like that. Yeah. And they, 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 you know, they don't have anything over their face. <laughs> they're just like, yeah. <laughs> they're like wa- looking like this. Like they can't do that in NASCAR. Now they've got like jet helmets on, and yeah. it's so wild how it's like you look at it, you're like, oh, this is almost like old school now. Yeah. When you're looking at it. Yeah, definitely. I didn't realize how good the cast was as well. So I've never seen it. It's got like Robert Duvall, John C. Riley, Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Michael yeah, yeah, it's Michael wild. Rooker. I mean, uh, uh, who else? Uh, um, you carry always, as you said, and uh, yeah. the guy from uh, Michael Michael Hooker Michael is his Rooker. name. The guy from um, Michael Rooker. Michael Rooker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was in a lot of stuff back then, but he was like the badass guy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh my god, in this shit with the teams, yeah. changes halfway through. Yeah, yeah. He becomes like the guy who's like a good guy. He becomes his like uh, gives him his car or whatever. Yeah. They have the like, the race with the rental cars down the beach. That's a fun. Scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that. Apparently, that's based on a real thing, isn't it? Apparently, there was an actual incident well, yeah. where the the chairman of NASCAR, or whatever, one of these two drivers, to drive together, and they wouldn't do it. They, they went separately, and they, and they, yeah, and they raced them there. Yeah. Yeah, it was based off of like that's the thing, like the old school, and then that always it's a a lesson in learning uh, how rental cars work. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you just get that insurance, and you can bang them up all you want. Yeah, it makes me think of that scene in Jackass where Johnny Knoxville does it. They're not yeah. quite so happy about it. In that, <laughs> right, right. If you can afford it. Uh, your final film, number oh, 10. Oh, no, no, you missed one. Speed. Oh, sorry, I have, yeah. <laughs> you missed. Oh, my oh, God, I Speed. Speed. I love Speed. That, that might be my number one, too, actually. That was the first rated R movie I ever saw oh, in really? my life. Uh, I was eight years old. I'll never forget how many F words I heard for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Just hearing them be like, fuck me. You know, like, when they're in the elevator and they, like, start, I don't know. It just made me go, like, this is an adult movie. You know, like, in that first elevator and stuff. And since I've moved to Los Angeles, I've grown to appreciate Speed even more because um, it was my introduction to Los Angeles. Like, I recognized landmarks here from Speed. You know what I mean? Like, I, it was my only frame of reference when I came here was like, oh, this is from Speed. And I got a job. <laughs> I got like a job at an office building when I first moved here. And the stop that I would get off at on the subway was the same stop that Dennis Hopper like demands the money, Pershing Square. 
and uh, he's like, leave the leave the money at Pershing Square, blah blah blah. So they they're like scoping it out, waiting for him to pick it up, and then he kidnaps Sandra Bullock at Pershing Square, and they run through the Pershing Square station, and I'm like in there every day going to work. I'm like, that's where Dennis Hopper like runs through the door. <laughs> And like, you know, riding the subway, I'm like, that's where, you know, I fantasize. I'm like, oh yeah, I could like, this is Nicole Kidman was like, or uh, not Nicole Kidman, but uh, Sandra Bullock was, you know, stuck to the railing here and stuff like that. Just riding in the subway. And the, in, in actually the skyscraper I worked in was, is seen in the movie. Like in the very, one of the first scenes, they pan out from a skyscraper into another one. Yeah. And that's where the people are getting into the built into the elevator. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I was I worked in the one that they pan away from, so uh, like that that skyscraper I guess is the one supposedly across the street from the one I worked at. Did you get a job there just because it was in speed? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it was all pure luck. And then to bring it back to another movie, Independence Day, outside the other window was the U.S. Bank Building, which is where the uh, UFO lined up to blow up Los uh, Angeles. Okay. So I was like, if I was in Independence Day, I would die immediately because I was <laughs> in the building right next to it that would have like literally been right in the blast zone which is probably for the best thing yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, when, I, when i think of speed i always think of the the scene where the bus jumps over the, the freeway it's the, the, captain of the freeway there, yeah it's the most iconic moment i think from it it's most ridiculous it's, it's because it's, the most ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> it's like it is one of the like ones where like people who watch the movie casually cite because it's like the one of the big peaks in the film yeah but yeah it is the most like a uh, ridiculous one it's also like the other one is like when they're turning that really sharp turn and they all have to like sit on the one oh, side and the bus like yeah. they're like what like you could tell that they were trying to think like what is the bus gonna do you know and so like they're like we have to make the bus jump something we're gonna make it tilt over you know those kinds of things but i love the ones where like you know dennis hopper's just sitting there watching all those monitors and stuff like that and like you see he's in an apartment that's downtown in pershing square you're like how like that apartment is like like he's living in it like it's like some shack, like it's a shitty apartment, but it's like that apartment would cost like four G's if you lived in that. <laughs> like that's prime real estate. It's got some secret cash somewhere. Yeah. That's why he does it, because he can't afford rent. That's why he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What he, well, he's like trying to steal money. It's like, hey man, just move somewhere else and you probably have a lot more money. I, I did read originally that Dennis Hopper wasn't going to be, his character wasn't going to be the, the, the main protagonist at the end. Yeah. It was going to be Jeff Daniels' character in like a, a last minute twist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. That's, that's interesting. Wouldn't, wouldn't have worked. I, I can't, think, at all, I can't right. picture Jeff Daniels as a bad guy as well because he's just Dumb and Dumber. That's all I just imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's Harry. Well, that was the other thing too. Like I knew him from Dumb and Dumber. Then I saw him in that. I'm like, this guy is like good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then he came up and doing a bunch of. I, I feel like Dumb and Dumber could have ruined Jeff Daniels' career. <laughs> yeah. Looking back on it, I do love that film so much. Yeah, that is so <laughs> It was fantastic. He was great in it too, and it was like it just shows his range. But he, I think he like re, like there was a period of time where he regretted doing that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it'll follow you around, won't it? Film like that. Uh, yeah. Your final film is Young Guns Two. Yeah, I forgot. I left that one off the list. Yeah, you did originally. more than Young Guns one. Yeah, that's what I want. Another ask one that Young Guns two, not Young Guns one. Well, I'll tell you why, and that is the simple nature of, and this is a conflicting viewpoint to my Bills fandom as in recent years. <laughs> but the Bon Jovi song "Blaze of Glory" was incredible, and it wasn't a Bon Jovi band song. It was a John Bon Jovi song. It was like when he split away from the guitar player for a while there and was doing his own shit. Um, and that song, like between that and Kiefer Sutherland. And, uh, you know, Emilio Estevez and like, it just was a, a fun movie. Like Christian Slater was really fun in it too. And then I eventually, I actually saw Young Guns 2 first and I didn't know, right. I'm like, there's a, there's a Young Guns. It was like one of those sequels where you could watch it and not really give a fuck about the first movie yeah. and like still know what was going on. You're like, oh, it's Billy the Kid and he's escaping, you know, it's just another yeah. adventure. So yeah, I didn't know Young Guns 1 until after the fact. And then I went back and rewatched Young Guns 1. And of course, that's where like they have that sound clip from the famous Nate Dogg song, like yeah. Regulators. Oops, sorry. And um, hold on, it's coming back. And uh, yeah, and, and Charlie Sheen's in that one and everything. And I'm like, this one's fine. But Young Guns 2 is just like more fun. It's like they, it's like they had success with Young Guns 1. And I don't know this to be true, but it's like they had success with Young Guns 1. And we're like, let's just make it more fun. Right. 
and more action and stuff like that. Cause we've got like all these good looking actors. Let's just make them shoot more, more shoot scenes. We'll add Christian Slater and it'll be a good time, you know? And then they had what's Lou Diamond Phillips was in it too. I mean, it was just such like a, a cast of like, yeah. uh, what is it like? Not Rat Pack, but like something like that, I guess, you know, like all the young hip nineties yeah. actors yeah. were all involved. Yeah, yeah. I, do they have? I mean, I guess they have things like that now, where it's like Channing Tatum. I don't know. It's just so. Yeah. Nowadays, I feel like there are less actors. I don't know why, but maybe I'm just uh, old, like I said. But <laughs> I don't know. It's like they don't have like a group of them, you know. Like that was like all the hot '90s kids were in this one, and then they were in yeah. another one or another one. But the only thing that movie was just so much fun. The only thing like that now is like uh, Seth Rogen, James Franco, and all them lot. They sort of do the same sort of thing. Like Adam Sandler used to do with his group of mates as well. Right, right, right. Yeah, Adam Sandler still kind of, I guess, is doing it uh, with his like Netflix movies yeah. and things like that. But they're all like 50-something-year-old. You know what I mean? Like the, I'm talking about like, I guess it would be like the TikTok kids now doing like a big <laughs> TikTok, you know? That's what the celebrities are now. They're just they're not even in movies anymore. They're in TikToks. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. And I don't know who they are. They're all like boxing each other. It's like, make a movie or something. <laughs> Looking at your uh, top 10, I've, <laughs> so I would say about seven of them feature someone you would call either a hotshot or quite literally a maverick. They all feature like a oh, rogue, yeah. a lovable rogue. So that seems to be your centered theme. Oh, yeah, totally. I love that kind of thing. I'm like, oh, the good looking guy who's just like, I'm, uh, I don't go by the rules yeah. or whatever. I'm all about that. Like, that's like Tom Cruise and everything he's ever done. And yeah. Uh, for the most part. And I mean, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, that was the guy I like resonated with wholeheartedly. And I feel like I still do to an extent, but I feel like that's kind of um, gone by the wayside as far as heroes go. You know, there's no longer the flawed. I mean, there is, but I, it's just different now. I, I don't know. It's like these guys to all their faults would lead them back to some redeeming quality. Yeah. But yeah, no, a hundred percent. They're on there. Did I put Apollo 13 on my list? I don't even know if I did that. No. I didn't. I left it off because I noticed you put that on there. Yeah, and I Apollo 13 is 100% should, been, should have been on my list. If yeah. I were to bump one out, I don't know who. But Apollo 13 would definitely be on my list. I, I know because you did comment on that. And I was like, yeah, I definitely put Apollo 13 on there. I know it's another one I know every word to. But I, that's what I, when you got to the end of it, I was like, oh, shit. I forgot <laughs> Apollo 13. That's, that's the problem with these lists, though, because you you watch more films and you think, oh, I can add that to it. I can add yeah. that to it. It depends what you've watched recently. Yeah, no, Apollo thirteen should have been on there. I'm dumb, but Young Guns two uh, is definitely like another one where it was on VHS. I just watched it over and over and over and over and over. I had like the same dozen VHS tapes I would just pop in, and I thought I had like a big collection. <laughs> and this was the extent of it. Like every Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> This is a proper VHS collection. Like yeah, I can imagine all of, I can actually picture the covers. Like I've seen them, you know, I've had some of yeah. these all on VHS. Oh my God. In my mother's um, attic, I guess you could, I don't even know where it is now, but I had like an old World War II footlocker of VHS tapes. Oh, right. And these were like in the top row, obviously. I sold all mine. I wish I never had. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah. for nostalgia, I wish I'd kept them all. Do you want to do any questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, before we do the shoes, Josh, we'll just do a quick quiz if that's all right. It's just one question on each. Sure. I think you'll do quite well. Your, your knowledge seems to be pretty good on it. Yeah. Got high hopes here. Yeah, definitely. Um, if Young Guns 2 is the first question. When Billy looks through Tom's bag, he finds a Billy the Kid novel, and what else? In Young Guns 2, I'm sorry, one more time. Uh, when Billy looks through Tom's bag, he finds a Billy the Kid novel, and what else? Oh, shit. It's like a toy of some kind right yeah kind of yeah uh <laughs> it's a jar of something marbles yeah that's jar marbles yeah uh days of thunder. Like, it just shows it's like oh he was a little kid he exactly, was just yeah. a kid yeah <laughs> <laughs> um in days of thunder what does harry tell cole to hit during his first race oh shit uh hit the hammer yeah, hit the pace car because you've, you've already hit everything else. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. No, yeah. He's like, I'm dropping the hammer. He's like, no, you are not. And then he, <laughs> <laughs> and he tells him, yeah, he's like, you should hit the pace car. That's exactly. right. Okay, I'm sorry. God, I suck at this so far. <laughs> That's right. You know, right? Um, uh, in A Few Good Men, which branch of the military is Tom Cruise's, char Tom Cruise's character enlisted? Oh, uh, he's in the Navy. He is, yes. Um, in Speed, what is the nickname of Annie's university football team? The Wildcats. Yeah, exactly. 
uh, in Cape Town. our wildcat behind the wheel. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what is the name of the restaurant Chip took Stephen to in Cable Guy? Oh, Medieval Times. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, in Wizard of Oz, at the beginning of the movie, what does Dorothy fall into? If, oh, in the beginning, she falls into a well. Uh, pig pen. Is it a well? Oh, a pig pen, my bad. Okay. Uh, in Back to the Future, what is the name of Doc Brown's dog? Einstein. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in Independence Day, what is the name of Will Smith's squadron? Oh, shit. <laughs> it's a tough one, though. It is a tough one, yeah. It's something generic, isn't it? Like, ah, oh, Christ, I don't remember. Well, they call the knife. I just know him and Harry Connick Jr. for two seconds is in that movie where he's like the yeah. worst part of the movie where he was like, <laughs> yeah, like the reverend or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, I'm here. No, I'm like, Harry Connick Jr. is not good for this part. They should have got someone better. <laughs> so, uh, it's the Black Knights. <laughs> Black Knights. They were trying to really shove Harry Connick Jr. down our throats. Right there. <laughs> yeah. um, in Twister, why does Bill visit Joe at the start of the movie? Uh, because of the divorce papers. Yeah, exactly. He's got to get the divorce papers signed. Uh, in Top Gun, what is Tom Skerritt's core sign? Tom Skerritt is uh, not Joker. Is it Joker? No, Joker is the fucking guy. He's like, Joker's dead. Or no, Jester's dead. What the fuck was Tom Skerritt? He was... Um... <sighs> ah, shit. I don't remember Tom Skerritt. Fuck. He was the main guy. <laughs> You're going to kick like it the boss. It's, it's Viper. Viper! <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would annoy you. Oh, <laughs> six, six out of ten. It's not bad at all. Viper! <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I thought you get that. <laughs> you did alright though, mate. You did alright. And you get and Thank you. You get to open the shoes either way. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yes, I'm so excited. Here we go. Don't forget, you got to pick oh, a winner. Right. We won't say who's done what. You got, pick, you got to pick a shoe and then we'll tell you which one did it. Hold on, I'm opening the box. Hopefully it'll be a tough decision. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that I have to pick them, but I like better. Yeah, it's, it's usually a tough decision. It's my favourite part. <laughs> Even though it's not been working out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bit we're most nervous about every time. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Oh, man, I'm pumped. <laughs> 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 oh boy I know this one speed, <laughs> got a speed one. <laughs> oh, I saw the speedometer on this side <laughs> you gotta have the speed yeah, one. Was, oh yeah I'm showing them off nice. that's the speed one that's very good <laughs> very very good oh boy this one is fucking fun too this, I feel like I'm at Disney World because <laughs> they had rides this one obviously Twister, yeah. oh, Dorothy, and then on this side, very well done. With the <laughs> this looks like the box of the film. Yeah, it does. Yeah, go the cow. Oh man, this is hard. <laughs> this is so. These are fucking awesome, dude. Both Thank of you. them are fucking great. Shit, which one am I gonna pick? <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. Twister. Uh, I thought you might. Gosh. Oh, gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Look at. I mean, it's it's great. Oh, both yeah, of them yeah. are fantastic, though. Obviously, I love this perfectly done logo here. Thank you, mate. No, yeah, these are fantastic. I was very worried. I was very worried. You were worried. You, you yeah, went all out on this. I one, didn't want to big Nick up. I was very worried about this one. <laughs> I actually thought I thought Rob would beat me. I, I really like the Twister shoe. I think it's really good. No, it's fantastic. It looks yeah. really great. This is like, I mean, this this looks just like the box of the movie. Yeah, anything that looks like official merchandise, you know, is always a winner. Yeah, for sure. And they had a ride in, I don't know if you've ever been, Disney World in Florida. They had a Twister ride that they got rid of, and they made it a Jimmy Fallon ride, oh, which really? is like the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's like a downgrade. But it was, it was such a fun ride. And that reminds me of it, too. The, oh, shoot. The, uh, the Dorothy thing, because they have, like, when you are, I mean, they had, when you'd walk through the queue to go to the ride, they would have all the cars from the film. Yeah. Like in the thing, and then they had like the Dorothy's all in there too. That was really a nice nod. Yeah, it's cool though. Might have put it over the top for me. These are fantastic, fellas. You guys are so good at this. Thank you for coming yeah, on, mate. Yeah, really appreciate yeah, thank it. You, mate. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me. I love yeah. I, I love meeting you guys back in um, in London before the world shut down. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it seems like a long time ago yeah. now. 
Jesus. Yeah, it seems like so long ago, but it's really not that long in terms of, you know, just happenings in the world. I mean, yeah, exactly. it was shortly thereafter the pandemic began. But yeah, it was really wonderful to meet you, and I'm so happy you asked me to do this. Oh, thank you for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been great. It's been I appreciate having, it too. It's been good having an American's uh, film choice as well. We get to see something that different. <laughs> yeah, it's been very good. <laughs> yeah, like you said, a very American list, I guess you could say. It was the first Patriotic thing we did. We haven't had any Top Gun, a few good <laughs> men, nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very cool that you guys did the shoes for me too. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you doing the Bills ones for me too. I, I love it. Oh, yeah, no doubt. very honored. No worries, mate. You're very welcome. Hopefully, you're getting lots of use out of them. <laughs> Oh, for sure. I just—I mean, I like just putting them so people can look at them and things like that. So, we appreciate you, mate. Thank All you. Right, cheers for this, mate. I really appreciate it. Everybody.